What's up, YouTube? Cat4 here, and welcome to... I forget how many episodes we're in into Seven, this. I think. Seven. And once again, I'm joined by my guest, Samurairo. What up? Well, I'm not a guest, uh, but... Uh, you co-host that now. Co-host. <laughs> Every other video I'm on, if I'm ever on another video on this channel, I'm a guest. But in these particular videos, <laughs> I am... He is my co-host. The co-captain. Yes. Captain. 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 Anywho. <laughs> And we're just going to get right into it, and this is the final division of the four divisions in the two conferences. There we go, there is some basic math right there. Yes. And I believe this is the blue division of the Kanto Conference, yes. correct? Yes, it Here consists we go. of the Marshall and Thundering Buffalons, the Gallifreys, as I'll call them. <laughs> it's actually Gallifreys. the former, formerly the Galonkalades, and now the Somethingville Super Butterfreeze. I don't know if it's Butterville or Butterville, um, but I'm calling them the Gallifreeze because it's a, similar to Gallifrey, which is Doctor Who reference. And I like Doctor Who, so he's the Gallifreeze for the rest of his life to me. And of <laughs> course, the champions, the Bavarian Beedrills. The Bavarian Beedrills. So we're going to start off with the admin to Espion coach of the Marshall Thunderant Booflins. Yes. Correct? Yes, there we go. I was worried about that. And uh, his mega was the Mega Gallade, and his very first draft pick was the Heatran. And he was dead set on getting this thing. He wanted this thing because it can be defensive. Uh, it can be it has, it gets stealth rocks, and it can be a good special attacker. So he, he was really, and I like the pick. I like, you know, he's one of the best steel types. Of course, he's four times weak to ground, but most steel types are four, like, four times weak to something with a few exceptions. Um, so I, I do like like the pick. Um, may, maybe he could have gone something a little different, but I just don't I don't see much wrong. There's not much to say because it's not mind blowing, but there, there's not much wrong with the pick either. Yeah, in terms of like it making sense and whatnot, it's a free flash fire. Yeah. Um, so the steel typing on it is pretty much gone. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind the pick. Like in terms of it pairing up with Mega Gallade. I guess it makes sense. Well, I mean, uh, they, they he, don't he really. Res he resists the fairy that would the fairy type that would hurt Gallade, and uh, Gallade resists the fighting that would hurt him pretty, pretty well. But I don't, I don't really think the this pick. I think Gallade is more of a like his Gallade was his backup. I think Gallade's more of a piece of the team rather than what he wanted to build around. And so I think we need to look at Heat Train more as the center of the team. Um, and I think you yeah, see that's, that that's actually the first picks. time. Yeah, I, that's I the first time we've actually not really focused on the Mega itself. A lot of people do base their teams off of their Mega, and the fact that he's going to base his team off of Heat Train it says quite a bit about the Heat Train. Yeah, I mean, and he, he he knows how to use that Mega Glade. He's bodied me many of a time, many a times with the Mega Glade, so he knows how to use it to deadly efficiency. Um, but I think his teams will be more centered around getting the most out of Heatran than Gallade, because Gallade doesn't really need to be built around. You just throw him out there with either a bulk up set or a swords dance set and just knock off close combat, psycho cut, zen headbutt, whatever. Whatever you want. Whatever fits your... Yes. And uh, his second pick was the Suicune, and this makes sense if he wants to base his team off of the Heatran, because Suicune does it, help yeah it does it's basically a perfect partner perfect partner to uh uh heatran anything that they're going to send heatran's way Suicune can eat up um eqs earth powers uh just um like literally anything of anything they want to send Suicune's way heatran can eat up except for electric attacks but i mean like he 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 actually doesn't really answer that that great later but an electric attack isn't going to murder the Heatran. Oh, no, no. Like, in regards of how he drafted, he does bring some things that might answer that, those those questions. Yeah. Plus, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not too worried. I like this Suicune pick. Um, I know whenever I go up against Suicunes, it's mostly, like, Scald, Ice Beam, Rest, Sleep Talk. Yeah, Crocoon. And, and, um, some Calm Mind Suicunes. So yeah, yeah. He, I, he knows what he knows what he wants out of these three mods. He's already, he's already explained to me a lot of what he like he wants out of them. Not exactly what he's going to do, but what what a lot he wants out of them this season. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting with that. But 
like like you said, he doesn't really address the thunder weakness that Suicune has yeah. with his next pick. That is Mandy Buzz. He gets. However, he, I just want to point out he got sniped twice in this one round. He had, and it was back to back picks. Okay, so I pick, then Alex Louise picks, then he picks. He wanted Crobat, but I took Crobat. He wanted Zapdos then, and then Louis, Alex Louis took Zapdos. So, so he ended up yeah. with Mandibuzz as his defogger that can kind of be bulky. Or that is bulky. So um, he was looking to, he was taking into consideration an electric weakness with Zapdos, but he, he got sniped. Yeah, yeah. And Zapdos is definitely a really good mod to use for that. But in terms of Mandibuzz and what it can and can't do. It does have the ability overcoat, which means it's going to be nice for things like uh, Breloom, yeah, Lamungus, stuff like that. And plus it can hit yeah. them hard. So that's that's always nice. Plus it has a foul play. So let's say if something swords dance and it goes for foul play, it's going to hurt as equally. So I do like the Mandy Buzz pick. It does make sense. It's also another immunity to Earthquake, which Heatran is afraid yes. of. Definitely. Definitely. So that's that's always a good thing to be aware of. And once again, he's basing his team off. He's trying to build the team around Heatran itself. Yeah, he he's making sure he he can keep Heatran alive for uh, for most of the other mons because Heatran can hit a lot of things with a lot of different moves. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see that, and it's gonna be really interesting to see how he does maneuver around the ground weakness. Or uh, yeah, for Heatran. Yeah. So I, I'm just I'm, I'm intrigued, and I'm, you can tell from his picks that, and he gets he was pretty wary of it. Yeah, uh, he also I just realized got another neutral mon to uh, uh, a, a physical wall, which Mandibuzz is, but it's neutral to fighting too. So that's kind of a plus. It, it, it's dark typing, obviously doesn't help that, but Suicune, Gallade, and Mandibuzz can all take a fighting move pretty well. So yeah, this next mon, and, uh, however, cannot. <laughs> Uh, it's a Kiram Black, and I don't know how I feel about this Mon. For some reason, in this format, Kiram Black seems to do absolutely nothing. See, I like the pick here, because he picks up just a Mon capable of pure power uh, that hits really hard when he was kind of... He took he took Heatran, who can hit hard specially, and, but, and Gallade, who can hit hard but he kind of has limited coverage he can cover like fairy psychic um he can cover fairy psychic dark and uh fighting but outside of that i don't think he gets too many moves to cover other types so while glade's an awesome physical attacker doesn't have a lot of coverage and kieran gives him some more coverage with the like the electric attacks the ice attacks the dragon attacks um and then he train adds the uh uh, fire attacks we can the water and then so I, I think it can like as far as just even the offensive capabilities of the whole team together they all it gives them great coverage with these five mons alone not taking into consideration anything um, I could see uh, the, the problem with Kiram because he's weak to rock he's weak to uh, fighting which is doesn't bode well because he already has one mon weak to rock um and that same mon's weak to fighting. Or, I mean, a different mon is weak to fighting. So there's some common weaknesses that are an issue for him. Stealth rocks aren't great for him. Uh, but he does have some stealth rock resist too, so it's not awful. Yeah, I, like, there's no denying that Kieran Black is a great mon. It's just, I don't know why. I guess it's sort of like the curse of the Kieran Black. Yeah. It just doesn't seem to do much in this format and I'm curious to see if that curse is going to continue or if he's just going to uplift that curse and take Kiram to a new level. Yeah, I can, I can tell you he did not shy away from picking this thing. He was pumped about it. He was worried he was going to get sniped, but he was pumped to get Kiram in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. it, regardless, it's a great pick. Um, his next pick is the Florgus and I'm very fond of the Florgus because, you know, there's only a couple limited fairy Pokemon that can be used in like an OU format or a UU format. And Florgus is one of those mons that can really help the team that he's that he has right now. He already has the poison resistance in Heatran. Um, 
the steel resistance and Heatran once again. Well, he has the immunity and Heatran, and he has the resistance and Glade. So he's got a couple of uh, things to stop in. Like you said, he has the steel resist, but he also has a steel weakness. Uh, another steel weakness in um, Kira. But yeah, he does have a fantasy core and a pretty powerful one. This is one of the more offensive fantasy cores. And once again, that fantasy core is coming back in. Uh, it's just, <laughs> I've never, <laughs> first time hearing about this, I'm like, this is not going to be, there's going to be a couple teams that sort of walk into it, uh, maybe an accident. But we've seen about half of the league have this fantasy core in their team. Yeah. I think, I think that's about it's, it. But yeah. Yeah, it's 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 it was really interesting to see that. It was really interesting. Sorry, I'm trying to do a couple things at the same time. Um, his next mon okay. is a pretty big pick, and I like it. Um, is Entei because it gives him a. Uh, I thought he was getting a little too like. I, I don't know. I think, I think he was kind of keeping away from certain things that he didn't really need to keep away from, and I think Entei kind of brought him back into that. Yeah, the Ante was a really nice pick just because, once again, it's paired up with Suicune and Ante, and I felt like that he was, like, Suicune, Mandy Buzz, and Florigus, they have decent attack coverage, but Ante really brings that extra viability that mm -hmm. normally you need an extra punch in this, in this uh, RBL format. And I feel like Ante does, like, for example, he do if he doesn't want to bring in the Heatran, he can bring in the Entei, and it's not very hard to build around Entei and focusing that yeah. Mon as your, as your core. The best part is he gets a 50% chance to burn on a powerful physical fire attack. So yeah, uh, he uh, he doesn't need to rely on Will Wisping or anything like that. He can get a big hit off and have a, 50, a coin flip to get a burn. So I, I really like the Entei pick. Um, sorry if it seemed like I was distracted a couple minutes ago. I was trying to help my brother with something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're good now. So I, but yes, I will. I really like the anti pick. Um, um, it, he he was he was thinking really hard about what to take here, and I kind of suggested anti, but I didn't think he would go with it. I thought he would go with something else. Um, but he he stuck with it, and it was it was a great pick. Yeah, the only thing that seems to be the problem for me is that just even just looking at his team, he's starting to create a similar ground weakness. Yeah. And he has the mons that to to address it too, though. Yeah. Like the Mandy Buzz and Suicune can take those hits. Mm -hmm. And even his next pick coming up has the Levitate, which is the Miss Mangus. Yeah. And considering this is an RU pick, this is one of the better RU pick mons out there. Yeah. Just it, because it's it's so versatile. And it gives him a special attacker, which he kind of needed. He had Heatran, um, but like he or at this point he has two very good attackers. Like obviously. Uh, not counting his Mega. Um, Heatran and Miss Magius are his two good, dedicated special attackers, while Kiram, Kiram's mixed because it gets Ice Beam. I think that's its only Ice attack, physical, like uh, Ice attack, good Ice attack is Ice Beam. So I, yeah, you have to run Kiram mixed if you want Ice Stab. But uh, and and Tay Kiram are his mostly physical attacker so it's it's not, he's not too he's not leaning too hard one way or the other because mandibuzz really just runs foul play um and Suicune really just runs scald and fortress really just runs moonblast so he's got physical mandibuzz special with kirim i mean with us we and forges and physical with his mega so it's kind of bad it's pretty a pretty good balance yeah and then make that person think twice about clicking earthquake just because Miss Bang is there. It's not a slow poke one, and it's not a light hitter too. Yeah. So regardless, if he switches in onto, let's say, hey, I'm gonna click Earthquake. Miss Bangus comes in. Well, now Miss Bangus can learn Sacred or yeah. What's that? Uh, Mystic, Mystic Fire. Fire? Yeah. Mystic Fire, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Psychic. It's got decent coverage. Yes, it does. So it's it's an awesome pick. I'm really fond of Miss Bangus itself. It's one of the better RU mons that seem to be quite, quite common in this uh in the ru tier yeah or nu tier even too um i, I like the pick i really like miss mangus it's a rapid spinner blocker it does so many different things and i cannot say enough about miss mangus yeah it, it, Not in, uh, it's probably one of my more favorite picks especially how late he got it i, I thought of 
I thought since it was an R one of the better RU mods, someone might jump on it earlier because they want to get it out of the way. But he got it at a nice spot, about where it should be taken. Um, his next pick is straight bulk, straight defense, and that is Regirock. Yeah, uh, I guess he needed a stealth rocker, and Regirock does provide that. It gets it gets him a second. So does Heatran. Yeah, it gets him a second stealth yeah. rocker. Uh, it gets him some speed control. Um, it gets him. It adds to his ground weakness, which is not good. But I feel like Regirock could take most ground attacks. His most are physical. So Regirock, it kind of. I would say most ground attacks are neutral to him just because of his high, such high defense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's definitely. Uh, that's true. Just because Regirock can take hits and. And uh, I, I have never really seen the Reggie Rock come out that often in the RU tier, or even the NU tier. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what it's go how he's gonna run it, cause sometimes there's a couple of sets that each mod can run, and I feel like Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel, and Reggie Ice can only run those couple sets because they're pretty much identical in in regards of what they can do. Like it's maybe a one stab attack. Um, Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel are just wall Pokemon, yeah. so they can wall hits for days, and they can set up the Stealth Rocks, Thunder Wave, Toxic, Protect. That's about it. Or you can run something a bit mysterious. Um, for example, I did bring a Reggie Steel, and had Shadow Claw. Yeah. Just specifically for Alex Louis Starmie. Yeah. So there's always that that he can bring that, but. Like I said, Reggie Rock. There's only a certain amount of things that Reggie Rock can do, and the way that he uses the Reggie Rock, I feel like it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's gonna I, be interesting. Reggie Rock does get the bonus of having Stab, Stone Edge, and Rock Slide. Yeah. So that that's a nice little perk that comes with the Rock typing. But there's a lot of weaknesses to uh, Rock typing, but most of them are physical except for Water. So it, it's not a huge thing, um, but it, it's definitely. I, I, at the point at the point where he took it, it's not a bad pick at all because he did need another stealth rocker. He did uh, need um, some bulk, like he had some decent bulk, but he didn't really have dedicated bulk. A lot of like Suicune and Forge just was his dedicated bulk. Mandibuzz, I guess too. Um, outside of that, a lot of Mons can get bopped pretty easily. Yeah, the the only big big deal it's it's not it's not even that big. It's just his speed. Yeah. Yeah, his speed is a bit. It's not on the quickest. It's not the quickest team out there. He's got two fast mons and then Entei gets priority. Yeah, but Entei gets like extreme speed. That's about it. Yeah. Um, um, but regardless, it's still Miss Mangus. Pure and Black is 95 in base speed, I think. Yeah. So it's, it's close to that. Yeah, Heatran's not the fastest mon. Gallade is. A speedy guy. Yeah, he gets he gets a big speed boost. And then it's it, it, it he doesn't really patch up that he doesn't really address it at all. Um, I don't I don't none of his mods can really get that speed boost too. Yeah, but I, I think he kind of addresses it because Miss Magius Miss Magius Reggie Rock and the next mon uh, can all T wave. So. True. He does, True. I think Miss Maggie is going wave, but I know I know Reggie Rock and Milk Tank, who is his next pick, which I really really like because one Heal Bell, two Milk Drink, three uh, T Wave, four Stealth Rocks, and the Grass Immunity to cover Suicune. Um, so I th I think that's a pretty a pretty big pickup, and to cover Reggie Rock, I doubt he'll run Milk Tank and Reggie Rock in the same week. And I think this pick kind of makes Reggie Rock redundant. Yeah, well, what do you mean? They both stealth rock. They're both both physically defensive. Uh, they both T wave. They both can toxic. Uh, milk tank uh, just has more versatility. And it has its self. It has its own recovery. Um, the only difference is the typing to me. Like, and Rage Rock's more bulky, but milk tank hits harder. This... Okay. Uh, yeah, I think um... so. Anyway. I mean, Milk Tank does get a lot of nice abilities, though. I think it gets scrappy. I might be wrong. Let me check. It also gets thick bat. I, know, I knew it, get, it got thick bat. I, I'm trying to think of its third ability, Milk Tank. Yeah, it's Sap Zipper, Scrappy, and Thick Bat. Yeah, so it gets a great set of abilities that allow you to run a lot of different things. 
Yeah, so I like I don't mind the milk tank pick in regards to like the Reggie Rock. I like milk tank more. Well, milk tank is fast actually. I didn't know that. It's 100 base speed. That's a random mod to be put fast. No wonder Whitney was so tough to take down. 95 running that 95 HP, 80 attack, 105 defense, 40 special attack, 70 special defense, 100 speed. So milk tank is definitely a, a fast mod that you can uh, get some speed control with. Plus, it also does neutralize the superior. Yes, it does. Um, even though they're not in the same division, it's just... It's a good answer. It's, he, he had, yeah, he has a good answer, and plus he was starting to build up those um, grass weaknesses, so it, it can't really be exploited now just because the milk tank's there. Yeah. And you don't want to get... I think Sapsifer increases the attack of that mon, and... Yeah, you, you hey, just don't want to do that. You don't want to play with that fire. You don't want to play with that. Um, I'm very fond of his next pick though, the Cryogenal. Yes. Um, I I love this Pokemon because not only does it bring a Rapid Spinner, Cryogenal is a fast defensive, uh, special defensive wall. Yeah. With um, Freeze Dry. Yeah. See, I, one of the few bonds I get actually Freeze Dry. Yeah, Sorry about that. No, no, that, that was me interrupting you. <laughs> um, he, it shocks me that like he is so fast. 105 base speed. Um, he does get levitate. Um, it's yeah. his only ability. Um, so it's another way to deal with uh, the ground types. Um, and it's another ice type. So he does have a pretty strong rock and uh, ground, uh, fighting weakness, but not like he's got it. He's got checks for everything with like Forges and Magius and uh, Suicune and Gallade for the fighting and Gallade, uh, Suicune. For the rock and Regi Rock for the rock, so he's got answers for each of his weaknesses for his whole team in this mod. I like Crygon because yeah, freeze dry, a 95 base special attack along with its bulk is really good. So yeah, um, it also gets recover. It can learn water pulse, freeze dry. It's the I think it might light screen reflect solar beam. Yeah, it's it's a very versatile Pokemon, and I think it's one of those mods that might. <laughs> I think this is. This is my favorite and you pick. I might have said that a couple times, but I, I'm really fond of Cryogenal just because you don't see it enough. <laughs> I like uh, look, did. Uh, <laughs> uh But I love the Cryogenal pick because it also addresses Ice type is a really good move and having a really fast mod that can take special attacks. Yeah. That's really awesome. I know that Cryogenal can take a flamethrower from a Mega Manetric. It can. That's that's crazy. Yeah, it can. It can actually outstall a Mega Manectric. Wow. When you fully invest Cryogenal and Special Defense and a Manectric too, wow. it's it, it's incredible to see. Um, I toxic stalled a Manectric nice. <laughs> with Cryogenal. Nice. So overall, I like his team. I'd say his team's in the top part of the league as far as quality. Um, it came together really well late with uh, Miss Magius dealing with the fighting type uh, weaknesses and then um, also the ground and then cryogenal dealing with ground um, uh, no tank dealing with the grass and helping with fire and ice issues um, like with Manda Buzz and uh, cryogenal so there, there's definitely some nice synergy going on here with this team yeah the, the only problem I have with this team is that once you go down the tiers his lower tier mons are his fastest things yeah um, the exemption is his Mega Gallade, which is his Mega and it's super fast and super hurtful. Yeah. But a lot of these mons, he does he does a good job of getting the Thorius because it, it's a wish passer and it can pass on that wish to See, heal all other mons. The way I look at it is Regirock is a wasted pick because he could have he yeah. has 60 points left over. Milk Tank does everything similar. It, it's less defensive but more offensive and can heal itself uh, without going to sleep. I think he could have got something in the. Uh, I think at this. I don't know how. What Miss Magius is. If it's. I know Regirock is UU. So if Miss Magius. Or I know Regirock is. Basically, I know for a fact he didn't have to take Regirock based on tears. And I don't think he thought Milk Tank would be there. So I could definitely see Regirock getting redrafted depending on what's available. Um, because Milk Tank, besides typing, does everything that Ridge Rock does. And its abilities are so much better. So, like, I don't hate Regirock, the Regirock pick at all. I just feel like Milk Tank 
does he's never gonna bring Reggie Rock when he can bring Milk Tank. Yeah, yeah, and no, I I feel like Reggie Rock is just gonna sit on the the bench for a bit and become that bench former. Um Reggie Rock all he does is bring is just an extra extra burden that you don't really need. Yes. So maybe he might drop this pick for something else and pick up something else. But in terms of his team, it has decent recovery. It's got enough rapid spinners. It's it will hit hard enough. Um, the only problem is just he might address it later on it, within Mandy Buzz having the tailwind. Yeah, that that um, can work. Sweet. Yeah, King there's always things tail. like Sweet that. Sweet gets tailwind. Yeah, so there's always ways that he can find out to run a tailwind and possibly work that in his advantage. Um, I, I, it, he might fall in the trap of taunt itself though if team if teams start to become very familiar with his team. Suicune, um, just because Suicune or Mandy yeah, Buzz Suicune, would get hurt Mandy by Buzz. taunt pretty badly. And Cryogonal. I don't think Forget. I think Forgus just naturally has enough bulk fat. I'm mean, like if he could get one calm mind up before the taunt, he'd be fine. Yeah. So that might be a problem, but it, there's only a couple people who might run taunt on his team yeah. and see how successful that is. Um, but I, I like his team. I, I think it's a great team just for this division, and he's he is paired up with the champ itself. But we're going to talk about the other team. The Gallifreys. I don't want to attempt their name. The Gallifreys. <laughs> yeah, the Gallifreys. So uh, they took... Uh, coached by Dally Tay Tay. Yes, Dally Tay Tay. They took Mega Low Punny with Ezra Mega, which is a great Mega pick, and then they took Manaphy as their first pick, which is another good pick. Uh, yeah, the, the Manaphy's... It's, uh, it gets Tail Glow, which makes it really threatening in one turn, and it will destroy lives if it outspeeds your whole team. Yeah. Um, and it, it's uh, 100 base stats across the board. Only has two weaknesses, but has four resistances because water is an awesome typing. Um, it, like you said, it gets uh, Tail Glow, which is evil. Um, Pretty much. It gets uh, U-Turn. It gets, it, I mean, it just gets so many things. Um, let's see. It gets... Energy Ball, U-Turn, um, Grass Knot, Dazzling Gleam, uh, Scald, Shadow Ball, Psychic, uh, Ice Beam. So it gets good, very good coverage. So combine that with Tail Glow, and there's some issues. He also gets um, Knock Off, Signal Beam, and yeah. So he gets he gets a lot of special hitting moves, um, along with, like I said, Knock Off. And he gets Icy Wind if he wants some speed control, too. So it's definitely a great pickup, especially with the 100 base stats across the board, because even though you might dedicate it fully to special attacking, it can still take a couple hits. Yeah, and it definitely builds, uh, builds a foundation in which he can create a rain team or just build a team around Man or Manfi instead of Lopunny itself. Yeah. So, however, he doesn't really... Take a step forward with his next pick. I, I don't think we should. I mean, I I don't care that he took a joke pick. It's it's, it's fu it was funny. I I'm, I laugh. Oh yeah. And and I'm sure he said he has a set to run, so it could win a couple games for him. I don't know, but he took Butterfree with the second pick. Um, it's it, it if he has, if he wanted it, he can have it. If he wanted to make the joke, it's hilarious. Like I'm not and I'm not being facetious. It was very funny. Um, and I have no problem with him. It's his draft. He can do whatever he wants. It doesn't bother me. Um, so it was a funny pick. And again, I keep sounding like I'm facetious, being sarcastic, and I'm not. Um, <laughs> it, it was a funny a pick. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. Uh, the draft was kind of in a like a slow spot at the beginning. And so, yeah, it, it definitely picked it up. <laughs> yeah, so it made it a little more entertaining. And I, I, I think that's all that really needs to be said because he makes a good pick after it. I, I'm interested to see what this Butterfree can do. He drafted in Season 1. It was one of his uh, pickups later in the season. And he was so confident in this Butterfree that it can wreck teams. So I'm really interested to see what it can he do. He literally changed his team name because of this Butterfree. So it, it better wreck shop. It better, like, like, does it get Quiver Dance? Yeah, I think it that does. That has to be the only reason you would take it. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um... Next, though, he took a good mod. He took a great mod. He took Togekiss. Um, and Togekiss can do a lot of things. A special attacker, uh, wall, uh, air slash hacks. Um, 
well any hacks you want uh, against Thunder Wave. Um, so I definitely like the pick here. But he's kind of um, you, he kind of, as the draft goes on, you can see a issue, not an issue, actually, it's not even that big of a deal, but rocks. He has a lot of frail mons, and when I say frail, I don't mean weak to rocks, just frail in general. So rocks, even though they seems like they don't do a lot of damage, it's doing more than you think. Yeah, um, yeah, he does, he does seem to run into that problem. I like the Togekiss pick. It's, it's a fantastic pick. It's an annoying pick that everyone seems to just pull their hair out when they see a Togekiss on the screen and they're like well here we go we're gonna continue these shenanigans and uh togekiss has a really good typing which is uh fairy and flying it takes out a lot of things plus it hits the mega venusaur quite well yeah. and it also addresses like fighting fighting types don't really want to be near this At togekiss all. they don't want to be unless they're on its side they don't want to be in the room no no togekiss is like you know what you can just you can just get on out of here uh, up next. Um, Go ahead if you have more. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's that's it. Uh, that's, that's all I have to say about Togekiss itself. All right, uh, up next, we had a pick that I think went a little bit way too early. Uh, Dustclops. Um, the reason I think it went a little bit way too early is because while it is better, I think it is the better than Dust Noir personally. I think it's just better than him because of its defenses it gets. I think he could have waited like two, maybe three rounds on it. No, two rounds. Two. I think he could have waited two rounds because we didn't really start seeing ghost types go till the seventh round. Um, and so I think he could have definitely waited a couple rounds on it and maybe gotten something a little bulkier, but a bulkier of offensive mon because he does not have a lot of bulky <laughs> offensive mons on his team. Yeah, he. he uh, I don't mind a dust clops pick just because. I think everyone's dealt with the Dusclops and they've yelled at the screen like once again he picks another annoying and mon. It, it, Dusclops isn't crippled like Dublade is when it gets knocked off I think. I think Dusclops with Will-O-Wisp can punish physical attackers and uh, is bulky enough on its own that it um, it can it can deal with it a little better um, yeah and the, the great thing about Dusclops is that as predictable as it is, you know it's going to run Eviolite, and you know it's going to be bulky. And but it has different ways of blocking you. It has the Willow is. It's got Infestation. If you want to go with Infestation, Toxic, yeah. uh, Willow, Pain Split, Taunt. That Taunt. You can do all of those things, and the Dusclops will not care. And the only no. continue. Oh, it even gets a Nightshade. So even if you do burn this thing. That night sh shade will always do fifty percent or fifty yeah. damage, and yeah. so it's basically a ghost blissey, except or chancy, but not as good as chancy, because <laughs> uh, it can guarantee damage, which is nice. Uh, up next, because I do like the pick, I maybe just would have waited for it, but I do like the pick. Uh, up next, he got what many in the GBA consider to be the premier Pokemon in this format fast electric types and the mascot for fast electric types is Jolteon um, the reason I'm so confused about this pick is at the time he could have got Raikou and Raikou does more for you it's bulkier and at the end of the draft he had 80 points left over so he could have like not taken um, like Gallade at the end of the draft and got a, like basically I think Gallade, trading Gallade for a Raikou works out better but Jolteon is perfectly fine at this point too because it, it it hits hard especially it's I think it might be the fastest base mon um in OU low and lower uh it Volt Switch Thunderbolt um like all of it hits hard any hidden power is going to hit hard from him and yeah so at this point I like the pick yeah I, I really love the Jolteon pick I know a lot of people are starting to eye up some Thunder Pokemon. It was surprising that no, not really any Thunder Pokemon other than the Thunderous were picked. Oh, Zapdos too. Sorry, my bad. I guess too. Yeah. Um, but after Jolteon, it sort of became Electric Pokemon were really hard to yeah. find, except for Raikou. Um, I don't know how Raikou. Except for fell. Raikou. Yeah, that's that, that was the weirdest thing that I've seen in this league that Raikou just wasn't like, drafted. Peace. We don't want your Aura Sphere. Peace. We don't want your Volt Switch. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I do like the Jolteon pick. As predictable as it is, it's good at what it does. There's no it's denying the best it's at what the it ultimate. Does. And 
it is tied with Crobat for speed. Oh, yeah. Crobat. Which is which is incredible. <laughs> We've mentioned two of my mons in this guy's team. Let's go, Thunderous and Crobat. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, it has a great ability in it being um, Volt Absorb, which does address Togekiss yes. and Man Mana. Man that, that is good. That's a good pickup right there. Um, the next pick adds to his uh, frail but hard hitting mons, and that is Breloom. And I like again. This is one of those picks I like by itself. I don't like with the team because it gives yeah. him a physical attacker, which he needed uh, because he had one, two, three, uh, four. Spe well, Dusclops is a negative attacker because no matter what, it's doing fifty damage. Um, so three special attackers or four special attackers because Jolteon and one physical. And so he needed another physical attacker, but I do, again I think he needed bulk. I don't think he needed um, like a frail More. physical because he has like outside of Togekiss and Dusclops, he is tissue paper. Like literally, you can hit him with a like if it's a stab, non-effective move, no one except Manaphy is going to appreciate it outside of his walls. Like nobody. Yeah, and it does make sense what you're saying. A lot of his team are just glass cannons. And um, he doesn't really do a lot of favors because Dusclops, as bulky as it, is, as it is, it can only take so many hits mm -hmm. from different Pokemon, and eventually it will wear down. And Deli Tate might be put in an awkward position where he's going to have to be like, you know what, I'm going to have to start sacking off things or he, start doing some residual I damage. I honestly think he'll have no success... Like he'll ha he'll what I should say I don't think he can have sustained success with the team he has right now. I think he needs to redraft at least one lawn and get a another bulky wall type because he, he literally has two walls. You know who his two walls are if you if you prepare for those two walls and they don't take a lot of preparing to deal with poison attack and yeah. to knock off and, and, and um. Know. And so if you if you prepare a poison mon, so like hypothetically, if I bring Crobat and I bring Knock Off, uh, I don't know Infernape, what's he gonna do? He can. Well, I mean, I'm just saying with his walls, what can he like? Once his walls are like knocked oh. off, like because no, nothing on his team can switch into a poison type attack and appreciate it because they're all so frail. Except for Breloom. Breloom for, no, Breloom is neutral to it. So, no, like, he like he has nothing that wants to take a poison type attack except Gallade, which is, like, two picks, three picks right now. Yeah, and, and Dusclops doesn't mind the true, poison. True, I forgot too. Ghost versus poison. Um, true. But, yeah, like, I like I feel like Dally Tay Tay might be forced to do some trades, might be forced to part with some mons just because he does need to address that glass cannon issue that he has. And this is where things sort of become a bit of a blur to me. His next yeah. pick is the Nine Tails. Yeah, um, I, I don't, I don't know. Nine Tails is uh, Nine Tails is actually bulky on the special side, so it's it's decent in that sense. But I just don't understand because if you look at his next pick and his first pick, you kind of start to think one thing. The and, and you look at Butterfree, you kind of think Rain, Hurricane. If Butterfree gets Hurricane. I mean, think rain hurricane, I think but then you bring out a sunsetter, which is what Nine Tails does. Like I, I, like I, it's better than Houndoom. Let's put it that, like put it like that. Like I, I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Like I, I, the pick isn't awful in itself. It just it has no place on this team. I think. It, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, I, 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 I don't know where he's going to go with the Ninetales itself. Maybe he can run that hidden, hidden Power Fire Manphy and take care of Grass Threats that could threaten Manphy. Well, I mean, he gets a... Uh, but there's there's better ways to deal with that. There's better ways. The, the, the only thing I can see is the special, like, um, what is it? Uh, Ninetales can deal with... Uh, what is it? Uh, the st I think he was like, I need something to do with Steel types for Togekiss. That I think that might have been his thinking. And at that point, I'm sure there wasn't like great Steel types, but I'm pretty sure like Embor was still on the board. And uh, like he's already very special, so Embor would have been a better pick. I think Blaziken might have been a better pick here. Just standard non-speed boost, obviously Blaziken. 
might have been a slightly better pick than Nine Tails, just because Blaziken King gives you some priority, gives you some nice coverage, and gives you dual stab that's super effective against Steel types. If you're worried about Steel types, so again, I don't know if he was worried about Steel types here. I just feel like if he's picking Nine Tails, he's kind of worried about Steel types. But then if he picks Blaziken, he gets back into that glass cannon type area. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. But once again. The Ludicolo comes in as his next pick, and uh, like once again, you come back to the Nine Tails, and you're like, you've got a really good team that you can make into a rain team. Polytoad was still on the board. Yeah. Like basically, and I think he should have subbed out uh, Nine Tails with Polytoad. Yeah, for, for that, to me, that made a lot like, of sense. It gives him and... a huge weakness to Electric, but like you said, he has Jolteon, and. He also has Breloom and Dust Clops who Breloom resist. And, and he could have drafted a little... I don't think he made his last two picks. I want to point that out. I don't know if he did. I know he gave uh, TJG basically told... He gave him a couple Mons on the list. And if they got, I don't know if they got taken or what. But I know, I know for a fact that the last two picks weren't made by him like in person. Yeah. Um, like I said, he's got a really good team for Rain. He could have gone that direction, but it seems to me that he's really putting himself at a disadvantage having yeah, the sun. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess he could run Solar Beam on Ludicolo and the sun, which could be helpful. But what Mon's going to be in that you want to hit with the Solar Beam while Ludicolo that you couldn't already hit with, like, Giga Drain. Yeah, and at the same time, it's it doesn't make sense. Like, Ludicolo is a pretty slow Mon, and that's why he's yeah. a rain, rain Mon. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I like freeze dry sucks for Ludicolo. Like if he runs into a freeze dry, he's in trouble. Uh, yeah, and he's he is gonna run into Cryogenal quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, division because so you yeah. could and Cryogenal takes care of Manaphy. It takes care of because it's a special wall. What's Manaphy gonna do? Like it doesn't get ancient power. It can get hidden power rock, but I think Cryogenal could eat that up, eat one of those up. So a freeze dry hits Ludicolo. It hits Manaphy. Um, Ice Attack hits Togekiss, it hits Butterfree, um, it hits Breloom, but Breloom also can hit back, but it does hit Breloom. Uh, Jolteon's not yeah, going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, Jolteon general. isn't going to do a lot, so Ice is a huge thing for him, but he does have Low Punny, which could shatter, and he has Gallade. Um, and I would say Breloom, but Breloom's not sped by Cry Cryogenal. It does get Mach Punch, but I don't... I don't. It'd be close. I think I'm, I think Cryogenal could live one mock punch. Uh, Cryogenal's not really that good yeah, on the side. I know that. Side. But I, I think it might. It would be close, but no, because never mind. I forgot. It gets technician, so no way in hell it was a mock punch. So, yeah. And uh, his next two picks are actually they like, like you said, they weren't picked by him. They were picked by the Jewish giraffe and. Pretty much, Ali Tay Tay said just to go for it and have a bit of fun. Okay. I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure. I knew he gave a list of one or two mons, and I know one of those mons got taken because it was Milk Tank. Um, but um, Gallade, I honestly don't think it's that bad of a pick here. It's not. It's definitely oh, not no. super frail. It's born. It's probably Alpha side his walls, his bulkiest mon. Uh, plus, he has a decent amount of points to play oh, yeah. around with if he wants to redraft. Yeah, if he wants to redraft, it's it's uh, all good. Um, and, and he's got extra points to trade, so he could trade um, one of his extra lower tier mons and bring in like if he wanted to trade. Uh, like if he ha he's gonna have to give up Togekiss or Jolteon to get a good deal. Like he's he, he'll have to yeah. give up one of those two, and I think he'll have to just bite the bullet and give up. Jol maybe Breloom. Maybe he can do something for Breloom in a deal. Um, but because I could see some people needing that priority mock punch and spore. Uh, it, it's, I, I just, there's not a lot of value on this team because you can't trade megas. And True. Um, and I don't I don't see why yeah. you would want to trade Manaphy because Manaphy's good um, and it was his first round pick. But if he loves Jolteon and Breloom that much and Togekiss that much, maybe he does trade Manaphy. I don't know. Um, just uh, as another coach looking at his team, I don't see any value for me. But that's also because I have Thunderous, so Jolteon's useless. Um, I already have. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. It, what I'm saying is, I don't see a lot of value here outside of Jolteon uh, and Togekiss. Uh, I, I see some value, like in terms of trade bait and whatnot. Um, Ludicolo can easily go to 
for example, on my team, oh, yeah. uh, Jolteon can go on any team because a lot of teams don't actually have a Thunder Oh, yeah, Pokemon. that's what I'm saying. I think Jolteon's his best chip. I don't think he would want to give it up because of that reason. Because he can't go out and be like, oh, I'll just go get Raikou now. He can't do that. Yeah. So we'll have to see what he does. And the last pick, um, I, I don't know anything about this thing as far as competitively. Um, it, I, all I know about is I tried to use it once, and it's near to... It's pretty much impossible to use because it's a times four weakness to steel, fighting, uh, it's weak to grass, it's weak to water, it's weak to fire, it's weak to ground, it's weak to, uh, if you sneeze on it, it might faint. Yeah, let, let's look up some stats here just to clarify. And like, But it does get refrigerated. Alright, it has 123 HP, 92 special defense, 99 special attack. Um, but after that, it's got nothing. So it's got two four times weaknesses, six total weaknesses, four resistances, and uh, eight neutral. So it's four times weak to fighting, two to ground, two to rock, four to steel, two to water, and two. How's it weak to water? Uh, it's a rock Pokemon. But I, too. I thought ice resisted water. No, it's the other way around. It's the other yeah. way around. And then again, yeah. I thought ice resisted grass, but it doesn't. It does get freeze dry though. Uh, it gets Hyper Beam Refrigerate. Does it get Hyper Voice? Uh, yeah, it okay, does. So it gets hyper, uh, an Ice Hyper Voice. It gets Mirror Coat, which isn't awful, I would say, but um, it's Stealth Rocker. It's a, it's a stealth tough rocker. to use. Stealth Rocker. So it, it, there's some upside. It gets Earth yeah. Power, too. So um, there's some, but like it's not going to appreciate rocks. It's not going to appreciate two very common types in this format or type moves, fighting and steel and ground. Of course, I think is the most common type or most common type attack used with earthquake. Just, you know, pointed out earthquake. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I feel like this is the one that's just going to go away yeah, in a bit. As soon as it can. It's, it's a bit of a shame because he could have really used that. Cause he, um, okay, he had 120 points before this pick, so he could have gone borderline or lower. And even though it's frail, um, if, if he's just going with the glass cannons, he might as well have gone with Crawdon. And I, I'm, I'm going to say Crawdon once in every dang episode. And B-League is a sham that he did not go in the first round yet. It's He should have been the number one pick. What is wrong with you people? It can It's got the strongest knockoff in the game. Some passion in there. He's one of my. Passion. He's one of my favorite mons. That's not purple. We've established that for some reason. Not like I swear, I didn't plan it. Three of my favorite mons are purple or very purplish blue and Tangrowth, Crobat, Ambibomb. So, <laughs> man. Uh, but I think I think Crawdon would have been better, even though it's kind of frail. It like hits ridiculously hard, gets D Dance. So I mean, like. I, 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 there's a lot that he needs to do to improve this team to the point where he could make a run at the playoffs. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think that he has a lot of work to do, and I think this is one of the teams that might change entirely midway through the season just because he's, he does have to address quite a lot. He does have things that could potentially work out for him, and if he's smart, if he's really smart... He might bring in some mons that he doesn't need, but trade those off yeah. later on. And that's how he can build off of his Jolteon or his Togekiss or something yeah, like that. Sure. So if he if he's smart, that's how he might approach it and say, you know what, this is what I need. This is how I can get it. These are the mons that people are offering me for this one. But if I bring him in, I can get that out. So it's going to be a real thrift yeah. shop for him. A real thrift shop. Yeah. But... We are on to the last team, and they are the champions. They also have an interview on the Reddit Battle League WordPress. Um, if you haven't read that, it should be very old by now, but I wanted to mention it anyway. Um, and I, a very good read. I very personally good read. think this isn't the best draft, but it is the best value draft in my opinion. And that the value he, he got late was ridiculous. Like I thought it was unfair. Um, he cheated. 
Yeah, um, his uh, it's of course Alex Louis, coach of the Barbarian Beedrill, champion of season one, and for a reason, he is a really, really good, yes, good battler. Uh, he drafted the Mega Beedrill, of course. There was a theme in this RBL league that a lot of people, I do believe, there's about four or five teams that drafted their mascots. Yes, and I was one of them. And uh, yeah, and, and he was one of them. So he drafted the Mega Beedrill. And he paired it with Lander Ethereum, which is a fantastic it, It's pair. a fantastic pairing. Well, A, because Lander Ethereum is a badass. But B, because there's one Mon in the game that 100% walls Beedrill. Obviously, other Mons wall it pretty well, but there's only one Mon that 100%, 100% walls it, and that is Lander Ethereum. Uh, because it intimidates it, so its knockoff isn't going to do anything. Poison Jab not going to do Jack. Um, so, he pretty much hit the nail on the head with his first pick. Um, I, I like Everyone knows what Therian can do. Everyone knows what Beedrill can do, and they know what they can do together, so I don't know if there's a lot to say about it. Yeah, I, I, I love it. It's it's a great pairing, and it, yeah, I, I just nothing bad about these two mons. Should we just move on yeah, to the second pick? The second round was the second and third round was the area of the bulky, annoying ass water types. Uh, because in the second oh, and third yeah. round you had Melodic, which is the Bavarian Beedrill's pick, Suicune, and Vaporeon all go. Uh, Melodic, I think, is the most creative and versatile of the three. Because you you can like it can run HP, it can run a few hidden powers, it can run Scald. Uh, mirror coat recover like it's marble scale so you don't necessarily want to status it unless you want to try and stall it out which is hard with recover to win a stall war with it um, I, I like the pick because it answers pretty much any weakness that the other two may have and the, and Lando answers its weakness yeah and it's it in terms of it making sense and whatnot it's it's an awesome one to pair up with Landorus, Therion and Beedrill uh, brings that special defense that Beedrill does need, and it's a perfect po Pokemon to pivot yeah. onto. Uh, Beedrill, if it ever finds itself in a situation that it's not fond of, well, guess what? He's got the Lanistherion, the Melodic, and those things can take hits for days. Yeah, de definitely. So, um, I think uh, he gets another amazing pick uh, in this next one, and he gets uh, Zapdos. And the reason I think it's amazing is because Zapdos can just be full-out special attacking. It can be a support with uh, Defog, Tailwind, Roost, um, Volt Switch. Uh, it obviously gets Volt Switch. And it can be bulky with Rocky Helmet. Um, it also gets Heat Wave. Uh, so pairing Zapdos with those three mods is crazy because Zapdos answers the grass weakness that Melodic has. So, yeah, um, I love the Zapdos pick just because this is... There was this is another mon that was on my season one team, Zapdos, and it could wall physical hits for days, and and it's just it's a bolt switch, it's a thunderbolt, it has decent special attack, so it can run you can run a special attacking Zapdos for one week, um, decent coverage, can learn air cutter, deep bog, roost. It can do a lot of things. Yeah, uh, like I don't think we're gonna be talking about like too in depth about his picks because they're so good and so obvious that they're, why they're good. They're not. When I say obvious, I don't mean their sets are obvious. I mean it's obvious why they're good. The next pick might be his worst pick, and that's and it's not. It's not like earlier when I said like uh, like when I say worst pick, I mean he had every pick was great except I, except for this one, and I think his next one after this one. Um, Actually, no, I, I like this pick more than the next pick. Um, Scrafty, because it gets Moxie, it gets Shed Skin, it gets Intimidate. Scrafty is bulky as hell. It is ridiculously bulky. It gets Drain Punch, gets Fake Out, gets Knock Off, um, gets good coverage. It's a four times weakness to Fairy, which at this point he hasn't answered yet. Um, but he does kind of answer it. Actually, I don't like the Fairy chances on his team. Uh, looking at it now, because <laughs> I know for a fact Scrafty could not take, even with the, like, even max special defense assault vest Scrafty, it still gets one-shotted by a max special attack Sylveon Hyper Voice. Uh, a lot of things do get one-shot well, by... I'm just saying, like, the... nothing you can do with Scrafty's gonna let it take a fairy type attack better. Like, because he has True. low HP, True. even though he has high defenses. Um, but, 
the great thing about Scrafty is if you run a Moxie set, you give it that assault vest. You invest. I would I would invest max defense and then max attack. That's what I would normally do, and it just eats hits and drain punches things and covers things until it gets plus two Moxie. And what are you gonna do? Like <laughs> like if you if you're smart with Scrafty, it can take out a fairy type with an iron head. I've done it before. Um, Scrafty is actually one of these picks that sort of went under the radar. Um, just because last season Scrafty, I do believe, went to like 8-0 and o or it, it had a weird, crazy good record and it became like in week 3 one of those mods that you could not mm -hmm. take down. And that's just because I do believe it was Ethereum Knight who yoes to Scrafty and he yoes it to perfection. And every week that Scrafty came in, it would just put in the finest of work. It could have bulk up, Dragon Dance. I didn't point out um, Dragon Dance. Yeah, it, it has a really good setup uh, move coverage. So depending on what you want to run on the week, Scrafty can actually put in the finest of work and just really shift the game in his favor if the team doesn't really prepare for it. And in terms of the fairy weakness, he does have the Beedrill that can scare away those those things and he can easily predict the switch in as we do know he is the champion he yeah. can i mean he's got plenty of things to pivot in and out with u-turn on blando uh volt switch on zapdos u-turn on this next mon um i don't know if Kek his last pick can learn u-turn it might be able to um i don't think so though i kind of lean towards no but it might so that that'd be a lot of ability to switch in and out but um his next pick is talonflame and i don't like I don't hate the pick, but I don't love it just because um, at this point he didn't really need physical because he had the Beedrill, he had the Lando, he had the Scrafty, and Rocks is such a huge part of the meta. I don't think I would have wasted the points on Talonflame. I think I would have just gone another row. Like, like I said, it's not bad. It gives him, but like it's his. That's his fire type. And all town flame is really good for flare blitz. It's suicide attacking, and, and so yeah, I'm not a huge um, fan of his only fire type being a suicide attacker. I, I'm not. I, I'm. I like the town flame on his team just because. It firstly, town flame does take up. Well, yeah, it's another. He got another one of Beedrill's weaknesses too. So in regards to like building a team that can help Beedrill, I think it's more of. Taking things that can take, that could possibly take out Beedrill, and he put it and drafted on his team, which, in the long terms, it really did help Beedrill. I also just noticed that he's got a really good, good U-turn, um, full yeah, switching definitely. team, and the fact that he he can do that is really really nice because get momentum. That's how he he. That's how he built a lot of momentum against Mr. Sir Grape. Mr. Sir Grape d couldn't ha didn't have any answers for his uh, yeah. bolt switchers, for his U-turners. Um, not a lot of people do, just because it's so hard to play against that. And like you have to have a really good prediction game to to uh, predict the bolt switch and U-turn and figure out who he's yeah. going to go into. You got to get that home run hit. You can't just keep trying for singles and chipping away. But the thing is, though, when you look at it, the guys he has to do the Volt turn, they all are weak. I mean, Lando's neutral to Rocks, but Zapdos and Talonflame are... So, basically, you get up Rocks, because um, he only has one way to get rid of Rocks, and that's the Zapdos defog. Um, so that's mm -hmm. an issue. That's a, that's the way to beat him, honestly. Um, to beat the momentum game, that is. And I keep forgetting to say Beedrill, but obviously Beedrill's main move is U-turn, so you, everyone knows that. Knows that. Um, but he, you can't, like, I think, honestly, Stealth Rocks is the way to beat that game, that portion of his game, not to beat him, because you have to do a whole hell of a lot more to beat him. But to beat the tur the momentum, get it, gaining, full turning, is A, get rid of the Zapdos, and B, get Rocks up ASAP. Yeah, like yeah, even if it much. means going down a mod almost immediately, as long as it's not your win condition, cause on a B drill, you might have to do that to get win the match. Just make sure your win condition is preserved and you don't give up your win condition. If you like, um, I forgot who it was, but whoever drafted drafted this elf, 
you put focus sash on that thing you put stealth rock on that thing and then you put explode on that thing and if you can manage to get off and explode that's gravy like that that's just extra <laughs> but like you need to get stealth rocks up against th this particular team yeah and and it's it's it becomes really apparent of that's what you need to do for to have any success on this team because right now it just it's a scary yeah, it, fast Like I team. said, the reason Stealth Rock is so big is not because of the weaknesses, it's because he only has one way to get rid of it. So it forces in that zap yeah. sometimes, and you can take advantage of that with predictions. Mm -hmm. And uh, his next pick is, once again, this is an old friend of mine. Uh, it's Gudra from yeah, Season I, 1. And yeah, I, don't, I, 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 like I love this pick. it. I like Another it. Another answer to the grass weakness to Melodic. Um, a uh, we uh, just general bulky special defensive mo uh, monster that can hit hard on the special side as well um and another one of like i said with crump another one of these secret good fantasy cores like this is a fantastic fantasy core that's coming up in these next three picks his three of his last five picks he gets these mons on about the list and you're gonna be like what what <laughs> um, but Gudra is definitely, it's got great coverage. Um, it sucks that it's only recover, reliable recovery and rest, but you can still make that work. Like, Suicune makes it work. Why can't Gudra? So. Yeah, uh, the good thing about Gudra is that it does get acid armor if you want to be a bit cheeky. Um, let me just take a look. He does have the momentum to bring a rain team. That's totally doable because his next couple picks can yeah. provide that. Uh, so that means he can go for a hydration rest acid armor and put one move yeah. on the Gudra. And that actually does put him some fine work. It seemed to be one of those you don't you don't expect it and it throws people off. So Gudra in that term can be very unpredictable. Uh, with the leftovers it can rack up that damage that it does receive. Um <laughs> obviously you can tell that Gudra was one of these ones that I really did enjoy using. And I'm excited to see it back in the league just because it, it can do a lot of things and it can do yeah, a lot of things I, I right. Honestly, uh, if you remember um, Dragonite Spam took Haxorus, I would have preferred him to take Gudra over Haxorus. They're both pure Dragon types, but tra like they do two completely different things. And the issue I had with Haxorus was Dragonite and Haxorus do the same thing, basically. And I think Dragonite does a little bit better. So I would Gudra would have been a good pick for him there. But points were a factor too, obviously. No, well, actually, it's only like 20 point difference, I think. But points were a factor somewhat. Um, so I, I would have preferred Gudra there, but Gudra's a great pickup. And so this is next Mon. Uh, his next Mon is the Metagross. It's disgusting. It's bulky on the physical side, which matches perfectly Metagross. with the uh, lack of physical defense of Gudra. Uh, it also gets Stealth Rock. Um, its biggest flaw is literally knockoff like to get taking a knockoff so i like i love the metagross it, it can it literally mirrors uh gudra's weaknesses with his strengths perfectly is it mirrors or reflect that one no. i think they mean the same thing oh oh <laughs> uh, yeah I, I like the Meta metagross pick just because it's so diverse it has a different moves it has grass not ice punch drain punch uh zen headbutt I do think it gets Drain Punch. Uh, I, I think so. I'm pretty but sure. I think the biggest reason it, 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 that we should consider a good pick is it gives him a second self rocker besides Lando, so he doesn't have to run uh, Stealth Rock Lando every week. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's really awesome because instead of, you know, Stealth Rocks on Lando, he can put a different move, and that gives him more diversity and flexibility on what he wants to do in terms yeah, of his team that's itself. that's I was concerned with when I drafted Infernape, and I kind of went a while without getting a Stealth Rocker. A second Stealth Rocker. I was kind of concerned I was going to be stuck with Stealth Rocking with Infernape any week I want to use Stealth Rocks, but I ended up with three, so... Uh, and I think he ends up with three as well. And, uh, his next draft pick is the Whimsy so Scott. Fantasy core of annoyance. Oh, man. Um, Whimsy Scott. This is a fantastic pick just because... I think it might be my favorite pick. Considering how late it was taken. It, can, yeah, considering the position and everything, it's one of the, the top picks. Um, just because now you have to be really careful with Alex Louie and if you yeah. want to set up on him. But you have to make it count. Um, you, yeah, you have to make it count and you have to make sure that you don't 
do a dragon dance or you don't do a sword dance on the switch into whimsy because well guess what he enjoys you dancing with swords or dancing with dragons and he'll want round two five six seven <laughs> you can name it go as long as you want like uh, uh, like it's just just the fact that he could finish a fantasy quarter of this quality this late is a uh, pretty huge um it it does it's not as good because of the weakness to fire to two of the members which you, you don't really don't have but Whimsicott is fantastic for speed control. Um, you, it gets T wave, it gets tailwind, so it slows them down while speeding you up. Um, it, it leech seeds. It get, freaking is annoying and good with prankster. So um, I think it screens. Um, it, it, it's just a great pickup this late. It's definitely worth whatever amount of points you spent on it, especially this late in the draft. Yeah, it's definitely one of the top pranksters out there, and it's going to be quite an annoyance to deal with this team. Uh, however, his next mod is the Armaldo, and I love this pick because it once again it gives him that option of always running a rain uh, team. Yeah, I like it more because it gives him a third stealth rocker, because I don't really view either Lando or Metagross as prefer preferred stealth rockers, and it, g it just gives him three mods he can rotate. Obviously, you're not going to bring Armaldo every week, you're not going to bring Metagross every week. Lando, yeah, you can bring every week. But when you bring Lando Metagross or Lando Armando or just Lando, um, they all could have Stealth Rock. Like, one of the, any of them could have Stealth Rock. And then some weeks you don't even bring Stealth Rock. And you could bring, still bring Lando Metagross, and you just don't know. Yeah, and I like that. That's why it makes so much sense to bring in the Maldo, especially this late. And it gets a knockoff, it has Aqua Jet, and it has really crazy attack. Um, I almost would have liked to like to see a psychic type here, so uh, Uxi Mesprit um, to get he would still get the stealth rocks. I still like the rain team possibility. That's definitely good. Um, I don't know. I don't know how viable. Oh no, because he would get 100% accuracy thunder. Does Zapdos learn hurricane? I don't think it learns hurricane. Okay, so no, it doesn't. but Melodic would get a boost, and uh, Winsicott could survive fire attacks better. Metagross would eat up fire attacks better. Um, so the rain team with Armaldo is definitely helpful, but on the other hand, like it's 50-50. I kind of would have liked to see him take an Oxy or a Mesprit. I mean, I don't want him to take Mesprit here because Mesprit's fine, but, but I would have liked to see him maybe add more coverage to his team with a Mon that gets a lot of coverage, but it, it, and uh, it, Armaldo works just as well. Yeah, I, I, I like the Armaldo just just for what it does and for what the value is of Armaldo. I think he's going to get his uh, worthwhile yeah. with Armaldo. And uh, I do believe his final pick was one of the B-League's yeah. top priorities. That, that's including no, you, babe. That's including wanted you. To cry. I'm pretty sure if, <laughs> if you looked at Vade in real life, his eyes were tearing up when he read this pick. Um, because, you know, like, he was already breeding them. He was already doing some damage calcs to see how much work he could put in against other teams' megas. He wanted Kecleon, and Kecleon was the glue to his team in B League. And the fact, and, I mean, that the fact that Vade was relying that heavy on uh, Kecleon shows in that it was going to work. I think I, I'm very confident it would have worked. It shows how great of a pick this is at the end because um, Kecleon is power. Yeah, okay. every move is stab. Every move is stab. Uh, I think it. I think it's special defense and attack that are both really high on it. Yeah, it's definitely one of those ones that can take special attacks. Um, you put a result vest on it. Put a power up punch, sucker punch, uh, shadow sneak. It, it can run yeah, it. You never, lots you of different things. And well. so, in terms of that, I, I like the Cacleon. The Cacleon makes sense, especially for what he's got and. Alex Louis is one of the few guys who actually did one, two, three, four, five. There's five people out of the twelve who actually used all of their points, and I feel like Alex Louis got his um, value for the points that he. Oh, one hundred percent. Like month. I said, I think he got the best value of like with the out of each pick. I don't think he wasted a pick. Like I said, Armaldo maybe he could have got more coverage out of that spot out of that pick, but it wasn't. It wasn't a negative that he had Armaldo because if he decided to run rain one week, he did give him versatility. 
um, to definitely do it. I'm trying to see who had the most points left over because I think it was me, which is kind of depressing. Uh, it was it actually was golf. my division person. How many did he? Have? He had 120, didn't he? 140. Uh, wow. He has. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and he went and knew with his last pick. That is shocking. Um. Okay, well, I mean, actually, he couldn't have gone over you. But anyway, um, so I definitely w don't want to say this is my favorite team because I still really, 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 really like what team was it? I gotta find it again. Dragon Knights Pam's team. Um, Mark Arth Magic Carps. I think I like that team a little bit more. Uh, but they're neck and neck. They're like one A, one B versus one and two. Uh, of the Bavarian Beagles and Ma yeah, the Mark Hearts. Those are my two favorite teams, like two top teams. And then after that, I think I have to give the nod to the Thundering Bouffants and then you. Um, in terms of my favorite teams, it's... I'm going to have to agree. I, I, I really like the uh, Dragon Knights Bams team. Um, I, I like the Minnesota Eons Twins team too. Just for what it does and for what he uh, spent on it, I think it's it's great. But the really great thing about Dragon Ice Pam's team is that he's got so much power and he has six extra yeah. points left, which is um, crazy. I'm gonna do my top five real quick because I said four, but I'm gonna do it a little more focused so I'm not blurting it out. My fifth favorite team is the Eon Twins. My fourth is you, uh, your team. My third is the Buffalons. My second which is tied for first, is the team we just went over, the Bavarian Meteorals, and my favorite is definitely Dragon Knight Spam's team. Yeah, I, that's a pretty solid list of... Uh, Tooting your own well, horn. Or, I'm just kidding. Favorite list. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but there's, like, at first, I didn't really, really love Alex Luis' picks, but as we went through the draft, he just kept building and building yeah. and building on it. Um... The only problem that I see that he might have, I don't know from all the guys. I think he does been. actually. Now that I think about it, he does. so he does it have does. another way to get rid of rocks besides Zapdos Defog. So that that helps his uh, weakness to rocks, but it doesn't really solve it because you're not bringing Armaldo every week. Yeah, and if you are, then and you don't see the Zapdos, then most likely Armaldo and has Rapid well Spin. Still for rocks. Yeah, but, yeah, there's, like, Alex Louis' team really grew on me, and so did the Jewish Giraffes. The Jewish Giraffes team was one of them on the teams that, at, at when you look at it draft by draft, it didn't make a lot of sense. But when you look at it as a whole, it makes way too much sense, and it's a really solid right, team so that he drafted. a couple questions, just to put you on the spot, and I'll answer them myself, too. What was your favorite pick, period? Just not value or anything, just favorite pick. Uh, my favorite pick was. There's so many picks out here. I I like the swallow pick okay. a lot. Uh, and and, and chandelier. maybe the chandelier uh, pick. Lando T has to be my favorite just because of how perfect it was for his team and how he was able to build off it. Um, what is your best value pick? Like, it may not be the best pick in the world, but where you got it, where they got it, and how it fit like fit into their team. Um. It's, it's going to take me some time. I, I, I do remember um, I said one of these Vaughns. I have a couple, really awesome. I'll say. Two, I have a few, I'll say. Miss Magius and Milk Tank for the uh, Thundering Bouffants, I think were both very good picks, especially where they were taken. Um, I liked I liked where you got um, Politoed, especially with your plan with him, or like not just your main plan, but like the ideas you threw out with him. I liked... I really liked where the Starmies got Salamence. Really liked where the Starmies got Salamence. Um, Toxicroaks, where they got him on top and Electros is absurd. Those are back to the fact that they got them in the second to the last and third to the last round is ridiculous to me. Um, I'm just running through teams. Pointing out Darm going in the third round is crazy. Darmanitan to Giraffe. Uh, so I'm like taking all the good ones, but you can continue. Sorry. You can give yours. I, I know I, I'm looking at it and you're just going through the picks that I I'm like oh that's that's pretty good. Um, 
in terms of tentacle on the eighth round, round pick is really not good, bad. Yeah. Rapid spinner, toxic spikes, bulky special. Uh, the Maldo is actually turning out to be one of the, an interesting pick for sure. Uh, I, the Chandler, once again, I always come back to the Chandler because it's it's literally the last round pick yeah, and you get a Chandler. I can definitely see. Like that's, I think that might be the best last round pick. Can't can't say for sure, but yeah. I think it is. Um, what do you, which team do you think is going to outperform? Okay, I'm trying to think. What coach do you think is going to outperform their team the most? Like, they may not have the best team, but you think their coaching will get them through that? Um, in terms of weaknesses and whatnot, I want to say as much as we beg on Ethereum Knights and Ethereum Knights team. I think he's a good enough coach to overcome those weaknesses and address those problems. And I think he will become one of the... I I really want him to become one of the top I, rated uh, trainers in yeah, this, I, I, this season. Yeah, mine's the same thing. My bold prediction was that he would make, he would either make the playoffs or have similar success to last year. He's got to get rid of that sock, though. Unless, unless... Okay. He has to get rid of that sock unless he has a plan with it. Because if he just drafted it because yeah, he's like, I need a fighting type, that's awful. And, and he needs to address yeah, the three Fs. I forgot about that. I forgot that was him. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I think he is one of the top tier uh, coaches that yeah, could make it if, work. Even if he doesn't that get rid of the sock, I still... Like, if his team stays as is, as drafted, I still see him uh, going, like, uh, 8 and... What is it? 8-5, 9-4, 7-6, uh, uh, something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's my question. I had one more question like that to provoke discussion. Um, also, answer these questions down in the comments below for your opinion. Um, yeah. I can't think of a third one. I wanted to round it off with a nice three. So, if you have a third one. Uh, I, I, I've got a third one. What round do you think the most amount of Pokemon... That, that was just a surprisingly overwhelming amount of Pokemon that seemed to got picked. So, like... Do you think round six, just because all of those mons that were picked were just oh, okay. so much Which power? Oh, okay. Which was basically the best round, you think, value? Uh, yeah. God, I don't know. I think it might be round three. I'm going to say because it's round eight. Round three had, let's see, Superior. It had Zapdos. Um, Togekiss. Uh, let's see here. I'm just I'm going to name off every single dang one of them. It had oh. Mandibuzz. Uh, it had Crobat. Uh, it had it had Jellicent. Like it had it was a bulky round. It was a bulky round, and I think that could that could hurt. Like be very like we could see these uh, round three mons uh, do a lot of damage. I think it's the round five just because Gardevoir, Crocodile, Magnezone, Azumarill, Drapion, uh, exclude the Sock, yeah. I don't know why he's there, but it just shows how much, I guess sort of why we sort of felt a bit, a bit weird about it. Talonflame, Florigus, Jolteon, oh, okay. Dogtan, and Haxorus. Oh wait, never mind. Wait, did you say five? Okay, so Scavalier's not good yeah. enough for you? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I can see, I can see, definitely. The, uh, what's wrong with that pick? Like, no, there's not. I don't think there's anything wrong with it because I'm, I'm perfect and I can't make mistakes. <laughs> are you? Are you no, dissing I can, your I can own see pick? The weaknesses in that pick. And I can, <laughs> but when you say everything else besides sock, I can see where it'd be the weaker of that class. But you know, that's that's pretty crazy that he would be the 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 weaker of those mons out there just because he he's nothing to yeah, like definitely turn definitely. your head around. But yeah. I, I think that was one of the top surprising concerns. It was fifth round and all the mons that were drafted in the fifth round. It's just pretty nuts. I to think see. seventh round was best because I got Mammoth Swan. <laughs> seventh round. Let's see. Typhlosion, Salamence, Porygon, Frozen, Zagan, Kong, Mammoth Swan, and Metal Draws. That's where I got my Tornadoes. There's the Ninetales, Tails, the Mangus. All oh, right. It's not last a bad question. Round. Not a bad on round your at team all. and on my team, what's your favorite pick? And I'll answer the same. Uh, my favorite pick, <laughs> the Sylveon. I okay. really my love my Sylveon. Uh, let's see, where are you? I really love the Musharna. 
Oh, actually, I like your Mega. The Mega Altaria, just because... It's, a, it's awesome design, great coverage, great yeah. uh, typing. You can do a lot with the my, Altaria. Uh, my, on my team, and, uh, it's Mesprit. Yeah. Mesprit's my favorite pick, my last round pick. And on your team, I think it's pretty easy for me. Um, it's definitely the... <laughs> the Gorbite. It's definitely the... Totally, yeah. It's, it's, I knew it's that almost pink. like a three pick, but it's definitely the Sylveon because you were able to build off it and uh, Charizard perfectly into a core of Conkeldur, uh, Ferrothorn, Sylveon, Dragonite, which is deadly. Uh, I also, I just now, this minute, noticed that you might... Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say, you might not have a lot of special attacking, but you do. You got one of that. Um, yeah, so I'm done talking. Unless we have, unless we have more to talk about, that, <laughs> but I think I'll talk all freaking night. But I was just saying, in that moment, in that comment, I was done talking. <laughs> oh, you guys will probably hear more of us talking. Uh, I believe probably next episode we'll, we we're gonna to. have a guest. We have to. Or well, most likely we have to. Is next We've episode gonna be before B League finish? Because I know Vade called dibs on being on the B League draft, and I think we should do that. Have Vade on for the B League. Yeah, most. Of it. Hey, Vade, you want to you want to come in and you know just do do a podcast with us? Um, this is sort of happening now. If you listen, if you listen this you're far, in. thank you so much. <laughs> We've chosen you but for the B League draft podcast. You're, you're coming on. We're you're calling you out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, is the next pod podcast? Is the next podcast going to podcast. be the B League podcast. Uh, draft podcast? Or do you think there'll be one between then? Because. <laughs> Uh, I think that we there, there might be start. something in we between there. We could do there. a podcast speculating how teams will finish now. Because they have the we have yes, the we rosters, can. we have the yes, schedule. It could be a, it could it would take a lot of work, a lot of talking. But we've got we've made it this far. <laughs> we we made it this far. I believe it's been like five hours just in one day but of we want Pokemon. To give you guys, the content. I had to go. You guys asked for it, and you guys have been I, showing up yeah. so much. I mean, and I literally did it for, we did it for like two hours, and then I went to work and mopped the whole building, and immediately came back here and proceeded to do this again. So, <laughs> so um, and I'm glad about it. I, I love talking so, about Pokemon and doing this stuff. Yeah, if, if you guys keep on showing your support, and, and you guys are showing the support, you guys are creating conversations down in the comments below, which is awesome to see, because... We guys want to hear. Apparently, I don't hear like Mega Pinsir. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, Shut your mouth. It? Mega Pinsir is a uh, great mod. Arabia. I'm just kidding. Just messing with you. I, I got what you're saying. <laughs> that I didn't name it my favorites. I didn't name it my favorites because it's obvious it's a good choice. I wanted to kind of name a surprise kind of deal, and that's why I named Mega Agron. Also, because I thought I might take Mega Agron too. So, just to clarify that a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but I think that I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the division uh, draft episodes. I hope you guys have watched a decent amount. Uh, if we did offend you in Don't any way, we apologize. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, now I'm gonna go quickly because I'm sick of talking about Pokemon after these. No, <laughs> again, just kidding. I've already actually got a rough draft of my team for week one that I really want to like talk to somebody about. But the only people I can talk to about are B League, and they're busy doing their own stuff. So I'm just like, ah. <laughs> Anywho, we're gonna get going once again. Not another long outro. We're pretty good at that. Yes, pretty good. But this is Cap signing off. Boy.